Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to Transport Fever. That's a game I had for a while, and uh, it's a game I've been wanting to play for a while. It's a game I've tried to play a few times, and uh, needless to say, I've never actually been really good at this game, because I didn't really know the way you're supposed to be playing it. Uh, I've always had this thing for trains, and I've always had this thing for city-building games like SimCity and City Skylines. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this one in, in particular is the fact that you're using... Uh, you're focusing on the transit or the transportation of goods and people to get the cities to grow on their own. So you don't do the city planning. You actually watch the cities grow depending on the resources and the p passengers you bring to the stations. Uh, I have t tried doing a playthrough earlier. Uh, I was actually on hard mode here and I thought... I was under the impression that hard mode was just affecting the loans, but apparently it does affect the running costs and all that stuff. And I had a nice little route set up going from Newark all the way through here down to uh, Port 11 here. And uh, needless to say, the running costs ran me into the red. And after about five years, I was $3 million in the hole and I had no loans left. So I thought I'd try it on easy just because. Uh, I've, gone, I've gone through a couple of maps to try to find stuff that was reasonable, I'll say. Uh, there's no point having three big farms over here and the only place to process food is over here. And, you know, you got oil wells up here, but the only refinery is down here and that sort of stuff. Uh, same time too, terrain and all that. Uh, if you want to use the map that I'm using here, that I used the seed was capital B, capital C, capital P, 2018. I have flat terrain, um... Yeah, I was using flat terrain, the largest map size. Uh, as I said, I'm on easy difficulty, but that doesn't really matter, matter for the terrain generation. Uh, as far as the actual game setup, I'm using the European landscape because it's green and not brown, like the the wonderful Wild Wild West there. And uh, as far as buildings, vehicles, it's all mixed, same with the trees and all that stuff. So it's both European and American, as you'd probably be able to see in some instances here. Uh, and then, of course, uh, because I'm in North America, traffic is going to be on the right-hand side. Uh, other than that, uh, let's go ahead and start making some money. Uh, I have watched a few people play before. I know the the actual principle behind this. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make money. That's the whole goal of the game. And the, the, uh, usually when I play, I try to... I always tried to get the resources and industries up and running, but I didn't realize that the only way the industries will make money is if the cities are actually growing, and that's why you got to focus on the uh, pedestrians first, the pedestrian lines moving the people, the passenger trains. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get a little uh, three lines set up, one from uh, Newark on Trent there. Yeah, Newark on Trent to Berg Marsh, from one from Berg Marsh to Saffron Walden, and one from Saffron Walden to Port Levin. I am going to have all my stations two tracks, just in, in anticipation of future expansion. And we are also going to, on this one here, I actually extended this road a little bit, just so I could get the station in here. Let me put the station over here, and then... Uh, probably going to be maxing on my loan in the beginning, just because uh, it's cause you got to spend money to make money, unfortunately. Uh, let's see what side should we have this one on. We'll have it on this side here. And we'll probably just have it right at the end of the street here. We will be getting some bus, bus lines going. Uh, that was actually another thing on my previous attempt at this particular playthrough. Was I didn't have enough horse carriages over at... Was it Saffron Walden? Was it Saffron Walden or Berg Marsh? There was, there was like 40 people waiting at every bus stop and every carriage is full and there was, the trains weren't filling up because of that and because the riding costs were so goddamn expensive I was losing money on it. So what now I have to account for is getting across with a bridge. So let's, let's go ahead and... See if we take this road over here. Oh, don't you dare take that out. There you go. Nice little back alley there. And go ahead and we can probably stick the station. Right there, because we got to make sure we have it has room to turn. But I think on this one, yeah, we're coming on this side this time. 
last time I'd gone around the back and then I'd come down, but it was a nasty cut I had to deal with somewhere. I can't remember where it was. This will probably show me. Yeah, it was like right around here. I was coming around the back side. I had to do a deep cut because of this high spot. But anyways, now we go over here. And where did I put the train here? The station. I probably want to have it coming this way. Maybe we can branch off to, what is that? Masham and to Louie. Eventually, down the road, when the time comes. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more road work. Speaking of city work, union break. No, just kidding. Uh, I don't get paid that much money. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and lay another station down. Let's see if I can find the right key to rotate the station around. Alright, so now, now we got to lay some tracks. Actually, let's get the part right, here. Let's get the bus bus system up and running, and find somewhere cheap to put this. Oh, That's one thing I liked about this game is uh, you can choose how cheap. Well, not necessarily choose how cheap, but you can choose different areas to build stuff, and the price varies. So if you're really stingy, you can hide something in the corner. Just to save a few bucks. Who cares if it inconveniences, inconveniences everybody? As long as you save money, right? So we'll put a bus stop there. We'll put a bus stop over there. Create a line. This was Newark on Trent. So we'll connect that to that. Name that Newark on Trent Transit. Alright, and I'm gonna keep all the rail all the lines the same color. So I got this one set up. I'm gonna get a bus system set up on the next three. Actually what I'll do here is uh, originally I had four carriages, I'm gonna go with six, just because I knew I was gonna have bottlenecks. So we'll get six on New York on Trent. So that is that one. Now I'll take the care of the other three and I'll bring you back when it's time for some rails. And there's our four transit systems. And these are just Small ones for now. Uh, we'll have to set them up to uh, uh, auto replacement eventually uh, once we start getting more in, more people to move. So now that we have that set up, now it's for time for some rails, and we're probably gonna have to start borrowing some money here. Go up to eight million. Leave two for now. Uh, we'll probably have to borrow more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna start doubling up my lines right away, in anticipation of needing two lines. And I find that's always the best thing to do, especially when you're having two trains running. And let's see if we can actually get to it without being expensive. Of course it's going to be expensive. See, they charge you for cutting corners. Right? They save like 50% do it in smaller sections. I know it does affect speed on heavier, faster trains, but we don't have heavier, faster trains right now. And that's a slow change. That's why that's so expensive. Okay, so that's one side. And now we just go like so. And make sure that's branched off properly. Yes, it is. Let's see if we can get this all in one shot, or if it's going to be stupid to try to cross over. Yes, it does. Okay. Like so. It'd be nice of it if they actually had uh, an option of building two, two lines at the same time, just so you can double up stations. So there is our doubled up track line, and now signals. Signals are so important. They keep the trains rolling, they keep the right trains from staying on the right track, uh, keep the trains from going off the right track. And even though they cost money, they save you so much money in the long run. I've had issues having these things in the wrong spot. Uh, like. You know what I mean? 
especially for, uh, it's always good to have extra on there so you don't forget about them. When the time comes that you start using multiple lines on the on the same track, which we will be doing eventually. And then what I'm going to do with, with each station is because this is giving me the main spur, I'm going to have this one connected on there just so trains can access the depot. And then what I do for the lines, uh, again, I'm going to keep them all the same color. My road transit's going to be yellow. My train lines are going to be this green. So we'll go from here to there, and that'll be uh, Port Levin. Let's see. Port Levin. Sounds like a new number. Port Levin to Saffron Walden. There's only one R in there. Get rid of that. Okay. And hit enter. And now we make sure. So this is coming in on, on track one. So I'm going to lock that. Oh, that's uh, port 11. So we'll lock that so it stays on here. So now what I can do is I can take this and connect it over here. Just so any trains coming to or from depots can bypass this track if they need to. So if it's. Uh, so that way this one stay, this line actually stays on there. And then we do the same thing over here. It's probably going to be default already to there, so we'll lock that one. And that's the first one. So I'm going to do the same thing we got to We'll be doing a bridge over to Newark there, and I'll bring you back when it's time for some trains. And I'm done. So now all that's left to do is buy some trains, and hopefully not go over budget on them. So where am I going to put this, the depot? Uh, since I do have everything hooked up, it doesn't really matter where I put the depot, so I'm just going to put it right here. Put it right in the heart of it all. Uh, yes, perfect spot. So I'm actually going to do the rails first. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have two branches going on into a single branch. So I'm going to start with this one. Go up to there with it. Then I'm going to start on the next one. And I like how it actually snaps to where the other one is. And we'll bring that right into that. We we'll do the same on this side here. Like so, and... No, you're not going to make it, are you? No, you're not. Well, you should make it. I don't know why you won't. We'll have to force you. There we go. And one here. And one, not there, needs a little bit more. There we go. It's not pretty, but nobody can be seeing it. At least I hope not. Maybe we can bury it under a mountain. Okay, so now that is, that is everything. I uh, probably will have to borrow a little bit more money, because I think the ones I was buying before were... Eight something or another million just because so I am to go with the Baldwin six wheel it's a it's more expensive than this but it has more power definitely more power more traction so we're gonna buy one of those and normally I buy these but I f these are actually cheaper to run uh, they're lighter too so I'm gonna go ahead with eight of these which would be 48 versus 42 with three of those so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we'll clone that. That is nine hundred twenty-nine. Yes, I can actually four, afford six of them. Three, four, five, six. Perfect. Give me that, please. Thank you. So two on Burglar Marsh, Newark. Two on Burglar Marsh, Saffron. And two on Port Lippin, Saffron. And we let it go. And we'll just go over here and watch our trains come out of the station. It's almost like little kitty rides. All right. Now, if I did everything right, which is a good chance I haven't, uh, we should be at a debt in about five years. 
what I'm gonna try to do is once now that the trains are out, out and running, it's gonna take about a year or two before them to actually start making some money. And then I'm gonna start slowly paying off my loan. So I'm gonna do a cut here. Now once we start making some money, I'll bring you back with the uh, show you how much green we got. Another thing I've been doing too, and I might as well show you what show you this here, is because the trains went out shortly after each other, uh, they're sort of close together. So I've been stopping one of them. I'm gonna wait till this one is about this signal here before I start that up again. And then same here, I have one stopped here, which is this one. And I'm gonna let this go as soon as this one hits the station. And the reason for that being is one, yes, you do need to keep your trains running at all times. Uh, at the same time, too, when they're running, you want to have them carrying a full load. So if you have one train show up to a station, take a load of passengers, and another one show up just after it, and there's no way there to pick up, and that train's going back empty, but meanwhile, when the first train comes back, it has more passengers than what it can carry. So it it's counterproductive having them run so close to each other. So despite the fact that you got to take a... Some, a little bit of maintenance, maintenance cost while they're sitting on the track. Let's actually stop that a little bit more. Uh, it actually works out because you're guaranteeing a better chance at a full load at the next destination. So those two are crossing right in the middle. That's good. This one's leaving here. This one is just leaving now. So it's not too bad. I could probably stop this one just a little bit. And we're still not making a whole lot of money, but it's going to take a little bit of time for the everything to catch up. But so far we're not bad. We can actually get to the green if I take take the last loan out, which I'm not going to do because I want to pay that off because because that interest, which is actually not bad in hard mode, this was two hundred fifty-five thousand. Anyways, uh, let me cut here and I'll bring you back when I got some green to show. And look at that. We got green across the board. You're ready to make our first loan payment here. And that is great. Because now we're making about a mil a year. I'm gonna try to get this loan paid off as soon as I can. And that way, not that we need the money, but if we ever wanna use the money to replace some trains or expand it a line quickly, at least we have it. So I got another eight million to pay off, which is which is awesome. Look at that, it's eighteen fifty-three. We're practically in the green. Uh, don't mind that, but look at that, 48, 42. This one still walks a little bit. That's the Newark on Trent, which is this one over here on the other side of the river. But if we were to branch this line off, let me get these out of the way now because they're getting noisy and kind of cluttering. But I do love having those multiple cam, cam windows. It'd be nice if you could reset these windows, though. But what we can do to increase... Uh, passengers to here is we can branch this one off to even mash them here. Mash them relatively flat flat traverse to get up over there so that wouldn't be too hard. We can definitely do that with the money that we're making pretty quick here and go from there and I'd rather get into more passenger lines before I start getting industry going. Like I know getting this set up wouldn't be that hard. Like I've actually thought about having like just uh uh, a dedicated line going from the oil to the refinery to the industrial, which would be uh, probably be over here somewhere, I guess. I'd have to loop around the back, but just have one, uh, just one line dealing with that. Goes to the refinery, picks up oil, drops off, or goes to the oil field, picks up, drops off at the refinery. And then can either go from the refinery over to Burglar Marsh and then back over to the oil field and over here. So at least it's making money two thirds of the way around or can even do this route from the oil field to the refinery to Saffron Walton. But then it's got a longer distance. It's traveling to the, the oil field empty. So there's different ways we can do it. We got another refinery over there we can take to use to our advantage. And yeah, we even have this one over here. That'd be a really cheap one to get set up to for Saffron Walden so we could probably have Burglar Marsh having this oil field this refinery in a loop there and then we have probably just a short spur here of two trains running back and forth another one here going back and forth which would probably be more more efficient oh look at that another another loan payment hooray let's see if we can get one more 
Almost. Oh, there it is. Look at that. We've already paid it off another million. Yeah, so then the next thing we're going to have to do, too, is start looking at trying to get some more uh, commodities coming in. Like, I have access to a forest, a sawmill, and a machine shop. And a machine shop can make tools just with wood. So that's good, but... I've worked with the worked with these, and the only way to actually get these to actually upgrade is to have both products running. So yes, we can get planks out of here, but we're only get so many planks until we start getting getting some steel going. And we do have steel somewhere. I have steel down here, but we got no way to get it up there. We have steel over here. We have iron or coal, but no iron. So those are always the drawbacks that you gotta think about. I know I can be, I should be using water channels to my advantage for boats, but I find boats extremely slow, and I don't see, haven't figured out how to make money off of them, to be honest. And then we also have the good manufacturing too, but at the same time we need planks and plastic for that one. Uh, plastic wouldn't be that hard to find, because, uh, we got, well we got farms over here, but again, you know guys, three big farms, a huge farm. Where's the nearest food processing? All the way over here. Well, there is one up there, but that doesn't do any good down here. But then down here, you'd probably want to use this for making plastics, but again, the plastic is even further than the food processing. But I think I'm going to call this episode here. I think between now and the next episode, I'm going to get this one paid off, and then we'll start looking at probably getting some more, more people set up in the loop. And that's probably going to be Masham. We'll get Masham going, and then we'll try to maybe even get some of these refineries going. But anyways, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.